Hi guys, Ryan here, and welcome to another episode of Somewhere in the Skies, Case Files. And today, we're going to be talking about a case where an Army Reserve helicopter flying over Mansfield, Ohio, almost had a mid-air collision with a UFO. Enjoy. An Army Reserve UH-1 helicopter cut through the night sky on October 18, 1973. The four-man crew, Captain Lawrence Coyne, Lieutenant Arrigo Jesse, Sergeant John Healy, and Robert Janicek, had traveled from Cleveland to Columbus earlier that evening for a regular standard medical examination. Following that, they would board their vehicle at 10.30 p.m. and leave for their return journey back to Cleveland. It was while they were over Mansfield that the night took a strange turn. They were flying at 2,500 feet, the mixture of woods, hills, and farmland below them. It was Healy who first spotted the strange red light to their left. It was at some distance, but it looked too bright to be a standard aircraft light. He would keep the sighting to himself, but keep his eye on it. Several moments later, Janicek noticed the red light also. When it began to close in on their craft, he informed Captain Coyne. Believing themselves to be on a collision course with this object, Coyne thrust the helicopter down, descending around 500 feet. As he did so, he would request information from the control tower in Mansfield. A few seconds after initial radio contact with the tower, their communications began to be interrupted. The red object was still heading in their direction. I looked out the window and observed this light moving at a very excessive speed, in excess of 600 knots. Coming at the helicopter, it looked like a locked-on missile. The men prepared for impact. Just as the object was about to crash into the helicopter, it came to a complete stop, directly in front and slightly above them. The thing that makes this particular evening a unique experience was that it was almost a mid-air collision with an object that we or you know as a UFO. We did not know it was such until it was on top of the helicopter, and that took just a matter of minutes. The metallic, cigar-shaped object hung in the air, filling the entire windshield. The crew would estimate the object to be around 60 feet in length and around 20 feet high. All four men looked on in awe of this huge, otherworldly craft. Suddenly, a green light swung from underneath, and hit the windshield of the helicopter. According to Coyne, the whole cabin turned green as the light illuminated everything in a bright green wash. After a few seconds, the light went out and the object moved up and to the west at great speed. Coyne, who had the helicopter's height locked throughout the incident at about 1,700 feet, realized they were suddenly at a height of 3,500 feet. They had climbed almost 2,000 feet in a matter of seconds, and never even knew it. Suddenly, a bump nudged the helicopter, and instinctively, Coyne climbed slightly, the vehicle now back in his control. The crew, still shaken, continued on to Cleveland, where they would make an official report of the incident. However, unlike many encounters involving aircraft pilots, military, or commercial, Coin would give his report to the media upon landing. The object that I viewed that particular evening uh, had a high degree of technology. It was composed of a structure and a design that we do not have. The object can move through the atmosphere without causing any turbulence. It can move at high speeds below 10,000 feet. There are no vertical or horizontal stabilizers, no landing gear, no source of propulsion reflected on the craft. Looks like it, it, it could go to fly in space. A local Cleveland reporter ran the story the following day. Shortly after, Coyne appeared on the Dick Cavett Show and told of the encounter to a national audience. It's because of his actions that the account is largely seen as credible. It also gave the military no chance to cover up or ridicule the incident. And even if they had tried, several people below also witnessed the bizarre events unfold. 
there were several witnesses on the ground who would corroborate the pilot's accounts. One of them was Jim Carver and his family, who were driving to the rural home just outside of Mansfield. Along with Jim were his three siblings and his mother, Emma. It was shortly after 11 p.m. when they noticed a strange red light in the sky above them. It appeared to be getting closer. Emma turned the car onto Route 430. As she did so, both she and her four children could now see two lights above. One was red, the other green. As each of them watched the lights in fascination, they noticed the sound of an approaching helicopter. Emma pulled the car to the side of the road, and she and her children stepped out to watch the events above. They could see the huge cigar-shaped object hovering over the helicopter. Suddenly, they witnessed the bright green light shoot from the underside and bathe not only the entire cockpit in fluorescent green, but everything in sight. As the crew reported, after a few seconds, the light went out and the object moved away, casting a brief flash of bright white light as it did. Incidentally, there was a spike in UFO sightings throughout the US in October of 1973. In 1988, almost 15 years later, a new witness came forward with more information. Jeanne Elias, from the Southeast Mansfield area, recalled laying in bed watching the 11 p.m. news when the sound of an extremely low-flying helicopter made her stop watching the TV. She was used to low-flying aircraft as their house was only six miles from the Mansfield Airport runway. However, this aircraft sounded lower than normal and she feared an imminent crash. As she panicked, she hid her head under the pillow on her bed. She could hear her teenage son, John, calling to her from his room next door. The loud rumbling sound had awoken him, and a bright green light filled his entire room from outside. Following an appeal in the Mansfield News Journal in 2015 for witnesses to the Mansfield incident, many people did come forward with new information. One was Brian Stevens, who at the time of the incident was 13 years old. He would recall seeing a red-orange ball that he couldn't take his eyes off of as he walked along Ohio 39. Another new witness, Glenn Stout, worked at Mansfield Tire. He and several co-workers were on a break at the back dock when a crazy-looking light sped towards a helicopter, nearly crashing. One particularly bizarre detail offered by Stout was his home electric bill for the month following the incident was only $4. He wondered if this surprisingly low bill had a connection to the UFO overhead that evening. Bring on all the UFO encounters here in New York City, please. My electric bill's insane. Judith Hamm was yet another person who witnessed the bizarre events in 1973. She claimed to have almost screamed out loud as she witnessed what she thought was two planes about to crash. Ham believed it was a military plane until reading stories of the encounter afterward. But let's return to where this all began, with Captain Coyne and the rest of the helicopter crew. Just what was it that was seen that evening in the skies over Mansfield, Ohio, may never be known. While it isn't beyond the realm of possibility that the military has more information about the case, the fact that Coyne bypassed potential sensor heavy channels by speaking directly with the media, suggests the incident is mostly intact. Whether or not there was some clandestine military involvement somewhere in the timeline of the episode is open to debate. And just like many other UFO cases, it also remains unexplained. But I would like to stress one important fact, and that is there is approximately 20 years of Army aviation experience between the four men on board the helicopter that night. We have been trained to follow procedures and regulations in reporting incidents, regardless of how they're accepted. And we tried to follow those procedures. And we reported the incident as it occurred and have avoided any speculation on the subject. 